Check, check, check. Check, check, check. <laughs> check. <laughs> <laughs> We're live. Welcome, Andy. Thank you. Thank you for welcome, having me. Welcome to a podcast, whatever. Episode number <laughs> three. Yes. How are you feeling, Andy? I'm good. It's a good morning. Yes. I'm happy to be here. I'm yeah. honored to be We're here. We're happy to have you here, actually. So let's get it on real, uh, real fast. Andy, give us a little bit of background for those who don't know you. Well, so my name is Andreas. I'm uh, originally from Poland, where my parents fled the country when I was four and a half years old. So I came to Germany. Uh, I grew up pretty much in Germany, in Bavaria. And uh, yeah, then I went, you know, for half a year to Australia to live there. Then I studied physics, went to LA for a year and did a PhD in neuroscience uh, in, in Switzerland. Okay. And uh, in 2010, I came to Frankfurt, and um, I'm very happy and proud uh, citizen of Frankfurt. Yes. <laughs> what made you come to Frankfurt? I was a job. It was a job. I, I was it was a job? Yeah. Is, is this the job that you're still working at? No, I switched uh, in the meantime. But it was basically after my PhD in Switzerland. I was like looking you know, to stay in academia. And there was like a great job opportunity here at the Max Planck Institute. Mm -hmm. And I came here and um, switched three years ago, but I'm still... You know, and where were you about Australia? What was in Australia? You just went there to just go? I was like work and travel. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. and like probably when you were younger or... Well, what? after my, you know, so back in the days when I did my abitur, you still had to do military service, which oh. I didn't want to do. <laughs> so I did my civil service. I worked at the university hospital. Okay. And then once that was done, I was like, I need to get... A far as possible away from this place which okay. you know happened to be australia uh -huh. <laughs> okay. and i went there and like i don't know i just met interesting people i had a great job traveled once around australia went to new zealand it was like good seven eight months you know like trying to figure out what mm -hmm. to do next you know? a lot of people say australians are nice people are they they're weird they're nice they're weird <laughs> i think i always Too much sun <laughs> i always had to feel i mean they're very chill they're very yeah. relaxed you know uh -huh. I always had the feeling that they are very backwards in time. Like you always feel like it's like two or three years behind everything else. Maybe okay. it's like a distance thing. Kind of like I feel here in Germany compared to the States that it's always like a couple of years behind. <laughs> even I would say even worse. Even worse. There. Okay. <laughs> I would say even oh, worse. Shit. Oh. Uh, but very friendly, very welcoming. Yeah. You know, um, they are very uh, trying very hard to not be Americans. Uh huh. But at the end, they're like Americans. <laughs> uh, really? So you don't find them more like British, British something? No. No. Okay. Maybe I just think that because of the accent, you know, yeah. like maybe automatic. yeah, the accent. Is uh, but you, you feel like the whole vibe and how they are, they they fit more to like the Americans. I felt like it was very American. I mean, they make a very big point of not being like Americans. Yeah. But they pretty much are <laughs> just like with a time delay of yeah. two three years. <laughs> where where were you in Australia? So I was based in Sydney. That's where I lived. That was mm -hmm. like my base. And then you know I traveled to moved Queensland. around. Yeah, I moved around. But I like I really I found a, just by coincidence a really good job there. Mm -hmm. And then I just financed all my travel. You know, I traveled once all the way up the West Coast. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I just saw, you know, whatever opportunities arose. And went but that it. was after your PhD. No, then. that was after high school. Oh, after right after. Civil after okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then That's after right. that came PhD, right? No, after that, I went to university. Yeah, but I basically, you know, I was just like, I didn't know what to do. I like applied to... Oh, like you wanted to, to play around a little bit. Yeah. yeah, I was like, you know, I, I was like, you know... I was really always into computers. I was like, you know, I could study computer science, but I also liked like the medical field. So yeah. I applied for both medicine and computer science. Yeah. I got accepted into both. Okay. And I was sitting in <laughs> okay. I was I was sitting in Australia. My mom was like, You got accepted to both. Like, what should I do? And I was uh. like, let me think about it. And then a week later I was like, you know what? Cancel both of them. She's like, no, what are you gonna do? I was like, Yeah, it just doesn't feel right. I don't think I wanna do that. Mm -hmm. And um, because at that time it was like a huge boom, everybody was doing computer science. Yeah, I okay. didn't want to be one I of the people who does yeah. computer shade. science, yeah, you know? Okay. Yeah, no, I so you. I literally came back a day before uni started. I uh. called up my best buddy. I was like, What are you doing? Like my best friend from high school. He's like, uh. Well, I'm going to Ellen. I'm going to study this thing called mechatronics. And I was like, What is this? He's like, Well, it's like computer science, electronics, and like mechanical engineering. And I was like, That sounds cool. And he was like, 
And I said, can I move in with you? And he was like, sure. So we like, oh. <laughs> I like moved in the next day. We had like this one room apartment. So instead of going to university here and picking one of those, you just somehow ended up then in Cali, California. No, so that was in Erlang. That was like in, in, El in Erlangen. Oh, okay, okay, Erlangen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And so we lived there together. I studied this thing. I finished the first semester and I hated it. I oh, okay. really hated it. I mean, I passed all the exams. I had to do this industry uh, internship where I had to show up every day at 6 a.m. Oh, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I finished it till the last day. But after the last day when I finished it, I was like, I'm never going to work in this profession. This is bullshit. <laughs> so then for half a year, I was like, I don't know what to do with my life. So you went back I don't to know Australia. what to study. <laughs> and then I decided to study physics. Yeah, so I moved to Würzburg. Okay. Studied, studied physics there. And how did how did LA came into picture in Switzerland? Was LA before Switzerland or? Yeah, LA was before Switzerland. So um, I studied I physics and then, you know, I did the diploma physic. So then you have the, the main, you know, you have the, the four diploma and then you have the Hauptstudium. Uh -huh. And you usually have to pick a minor in the Hauptstudium, yeah. which was in Würzburg uh, astronomy or applied mathematics. And I was like, that really doesn't interest me at all. Uh -huh. But I was always interested in the brain. I was always yeah. interested, you know, like how is it that, you know, we have this thing here that is like made out, out of that matter, but yeah. somehow we have this conscious, we have these conscious experiences. Yeah, yeah very so interesting. Very interesting, right? I was always intrigued. And I was basically terrorizing the physics department. I was like, look, I want to like have this minor in neuroscience. And they were like, well, well, you can't just do this. I was like, well, who says you can't just do that? So, yeah. you know, I had like to find five or six people to like, you know, who, who will be on board with that. I uh -huh. had to convince the biology department um, that they will support physicists studying neuroscience. Oh, okay. And, uh, and it was very funny because like the guy who was in charge of the biology curriculum he was a physicist by training so he was very open to that yeah yeah and so basically i think within two or three months we had like this minor in neuroscience approved and so then you know i i could study neuroscience so you were the first person which, which meant that other people are also exactly, allowed to do it, do it right? oh, oh that's <laughs> respect yeah. that was respect. really good that was yeah. really fun and we were like six seven eight people who did that okay and then you had to do like you know your diploma thesis and i was like okay, I have to do a physics diploma thesis. I was like, I'm not interested in that. Yeah. Mm. And so at the time, you know, I was reading a lot about neuroscience. I was like doing, you know, I had a lot of classes and I was like, you know what? Maybe I'll just apply for an internship somewhere around the world. I'm going to dabble more with this neuroscience thing. So, you know, I just wrote emails to like the biggest labs in the world yeah. that I found somehow interesting. Wrote 15, 20 emails, you know, been like young, naive boy, been like, you know, can I do an internship with you? Two or three people maybe replied. One of them was this guy, Christoph Koch in LA uh -huh. from mm -hmm. Caltech. And he was like, well, how much science can you do in six months? You would have to come for one year. And then I was like, okay, cool. Can we make a diploma thesis out of this? He's like, sure, no problem. <laughs> okay. well, it I mean, sounds like a market. <laughs> sounds like a marketplace or yeah, something. Hey, can we do win, that? Win. Yeah, why not? <laughs> and so, you know, there was, of course, a lot of paperwork, a lot of administrative things mm -hmm. to do. But that was then my ticket to LA. Yeah. That's yeah. that's amazing. How long did you say four years in LA? No, no one no, year. No. Well, no, one fourteen year. months. Fourteen uh -huh. months in LA. Fourteen months. Fourteen in LA. months in LA, and after that, I went to Switzerland for four years. How was LA for you? LA as was a Polish slash German <laughs> <laughs> kid. LA was amazing. I mean, if you're in your mid twenties and you go to a city like LA. I mean, it's just uh, what, around what what time? I you was twenty six. I was twenty six. So when was that? When was that in the LA? That was 13 years ago, 2006, 2007. Oh, okay. So in the 2000s you were 2000s, in. 2000s, yeah. yeah. Okay. And I mean, it was just mind blowing. I mean, um, I suppose lots of... Um, Did you learn how to surf in that time? I picked up surfing yeah. there, yeah, I always, <laughs> I, I had like my, my best buddy, like, you know, we had like at Caltech, there was like a lot of clubs, so there was like a surfing club. Uh, after a couple of months, I just bought a car because mm -hmm. I was like this you, for this city you need a car yeah, yeah and then every Sunday morning seven o'clock you know we picked up the surfboards went to Santa Monica like yeah. half an hour yeah. half an hour we were in the water till like noon and by noon when the whole city was going to the beach you know all of them he getting stuck go, yeah. for two or three hours in traffic mm. we were going back uh. yeah my friend lives in Santa Monica right now he goes literally every day surfing yeah every day and he like for him it's like the beach is like 10 minutes away yeah that's crazy. And then, wait, so you came back to Germany or you directly to went Switzerland. to Switzerland? I went to Switzerland. Well, when I was in LA, I was like, 
I'm going to live here forever. Yeah. I was like, okay. I knew I wanted to do this PhD in Switzerland because I wanted to work on a certain topic. I was really interested. I thought, you know, going to DTH is a good, mm -hmm, good mm -hmm. move. But I was like, you know, I'm going for this PhD to, uh, to Switzerland. I'm going to be in LA and this is my place to be. I never thought I would be coming back to Germany. Okay, so you were again. planning basically going to Switzerland, finish your PhD, come back to LA. Yeah, exactly. And what happened? <laughs> well, by the time... Yeah, I you went from beach vibes to mountain vibes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I was... I I went from sun to yeah. fucking <laughs> rain, darkness. Oh, yeah. You know, I moved in November from sunny oh, LA. Oh my to god, sun. that's the worst. I, mean, I didn't see the sun till next April or yeah, May. Yeah. I mean, I had to buy one of these like daylight lamps. Yeah, oh, just, you know, just, just, yeah. just like you don't get depressed. You know, it was yeah. like you know, like Zurich. I mean, it's beautiful, right? It's picturesque. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like Zurich is a beautiful town. But man, it's dark. It's yeah. So most of the Scandinavian countries are yeah. depressing. Yeah. yeah. You know what time. I thought was weird about Zurich? My first time I was there for work. Um, I went there and I'm getting out of the train station, and then I see like random women just standing around, like on the side streets and like the main street even. And I'm thinking like, what's that's weird? I have a feeling I'm back home in New York. Yeah. Or like, you know, like you have prostitutes that are just like, <laughs> but I'm like, no, that can't be. It's Switzerland. All the yeah, money's here. Yeah, it's yeah, bank. Yeah. And then I really realized there was like old people walking up to the ladies, like ugly things too ugly. But they were like, well, and I'm thinking like Switzerland, they all got money, nice style. There's no way they got ugly prostitutes. Yo. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> but so, and I see the guy and he's like talking to her and I'm like, well, I'm really getting that city vibe. Like the, mm -hmm. something is shady right here. And then I realize that I like, go on a side street and I see him giving money. And then I'm thinking like, are they about to do it out on the street? <laughs> <laughs> there's no way. Cause there's no like, I guess, but then I started to realize there was like little hotels or like rent for an hour or half hour. And I'm thinking, this is Switzerland. I can't believe that they got like, you know, prostitutes on the street, just open up a red light and let them do it legally. That's what I thought it was weird about. Zurich when I was there like I, I didn't see ago. that actually yeah. it's funny it was like two years ago so Andy did you get some <laughs> no. Did you get some action in? <laughs> Never in my life. So far, until today. Mark Kevin, that's the first time I ever heard about that. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, to uh, finish it off, so you finished PhD basically in Switzerland, and yeah, what what happened? Well, I didn't finish it yet. I was like, I had a very complicated relationship with my PhD advisor towards the end, and I was like, at a certain point, okay, I got all my data. It's not like I'm gonna, like, you know, like I saw that the people at the time that I came in, they were still there. So they were already like eight years into this. And I was okay. like, I'm not gonna end up like them. Yeah. You know, we mm -hmm. had like our struggles and there was like this job that was perfectly lined up for me in Frankfurt with the guy that I wanted to work in LA with, but at, by, by that time he had he moved had to Frankfurt because yeah, okay. he became a director here in Frankfurt for the Max Planck Institute. And I was like, well, you know, the chips it fall into place. It was meant right? to be. It was yeah. meant to be. So I moved to Frankfurt, which at that point I had no idea what the city was all about. All I knew about Frankfurt was there's an airport. And yeah. I've never been to Frankfurt before. You didn't hear about the train station and like your Bahnhofsviertel, you know, like no, the nothing. I was like complete. It was a complete you know? white dot on the map for okay. me. You know? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, it was the job that actually got you here. The job that got me here. And yeah. now, like after all those years, do you do you feel bad for not going to? I mean, definitely right now. But like, do you feel bad for maybe missing this? You LA mean like thing? regret? Yeah. Do you regret? I mean, there's certainly some nostalgia. You know, I'm like, it would be great. It would have been maybe great. At the mm -hmm. same time, you know, right now I wouldn't want to be in the states. Even yeah. In LA. I Nobody. Know, it's like very Nobody. Fucked up. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe there's like some romantic side of me. It's like, you know, this was great, but maybe it's great to just leave it like that. And yeah. be like, you know, this was a great special time in yeah. your life. You know, you get exposed to so many different people of so many different yeah. kinds and traits. Maybe it's good to conserve it like that. I mean, I know for sure I will go back sometime probably. Mm -hmm. But I think the atmosphere has to be right. You mean go us. go back uh, to LA just to visit or to No, move? I think I can really imagine living there. Like I like the vibe of the city, but in a different political setting, in a different, you know. Yeah, if the country survives. Yeah, well, we have to see about that. <laughs> <laughs> I think we, I think our generation, I think we're, we are the generation of witnessing the fall of America, I would say. What do you think? No, I would just say like, it's not really the fall of America per se, but I think everybody's being open or how, how can I say this, but uh, um, the way media works today, mm. everybody can see everything a lot quicker. 
Mm-hmm. And you can like ingest everything what's happening, whether it's through news channels, um, Facebook, uh, Insta, uh, whatever it is, then you can really just research a lot quicker. And I think that it's just not even a fall of America. Maybe it's just a fall of how we see government and mm-hmm. how that how they how much they are involved in our life and control and how much we really don't have to say about certain things that we we say we're all free, but are we really free? Yeah, so that's I don't, re- a, mm-hmm. I don't that's really think question. it's just the fall of America. I just think everybody's finally waking up in some kind of way and starting to realize that there's a lot more behind the scenes and a lot more that you have to do to didn't just vote, for example. You have to really get out there on the streets and make a change in yeah. your neighborhood and you know, not just rely on politicians or people that you think are in that position and they have to do it. But if you're living in a certain area and you see that there's a problem, then you can. there's so many things that you can do, you know, to help mm-hmm. your community. And if everybody acted like that in a micro sense, then it'll get bigger automatically. Mm-hmm. You know? At the same time, I feel like that there is still a demise of America as it's perceived in the, oh, as in the world. Yes, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like, you know, when, when I grew up in the 90s, right, yeah. everybody, I just talked to this with a friend last weekend, like, you know, when we were teenagers in the 90s, I mean, everybody wanted to go to America. Yeah, you're like right. The teenagers, you yeah. know, like if in, in your high school, if somebody was lucky enough to do a high school year abroad, yeah. in the that's West, like, was <laughs> God. Yeah, yeah, was like yeah. oh my God, what you went happened? to the States. Let me see you know? shoes. Yeah. <laughs> that was just like the most yeah. amazing thing, you know? True. And today everybody's like, why would I go? Yeah, to why America, would I want to go? You know? Even Americans are finally moving out of America. Exactly, like right? Myself, I think it's very you know? sad because you had this role model of like, yeah. you know, a young country where, you know, it's a very young country, right? 500 mm-hmm. years old, 600 years old. Yeah. Where like, you know, people went there for mm-hmm. a better life. To, all you know, to change. All yeah. to change. Yeah. You know, and it's really going down the drain in a certain, yeah. in a certain I way. Had, you know? I actually had a conversation last night after the the get together uh-huh. had a conversation with a friend of mine and we were talking about america and i said that the, you know the idea of american dream i i liked it you know i i think it's something um let's say poetic um in a way obviously people took it way far way, way too you know they took it way too far but i just realized like this country is built on like you know, killing indigenous people and like this country is built on taking over when I think about it, you know what I mean? And everything from that point where it's still to this day, it's, it's, it, I think from the start, this country went in the bad direction. Don't you think? Um, well, I think what people forget when they say that is that those people were Europeans. <laughs> yeah. That, you know, resettled and, yeah. And it's kind of hard to leave values back home or your ideals. And then just because you're in a new place doesn't mean that your ideals are going to change. You know, and that was the, I think that was the whole fantasy that um, America, so it was a good propaganda. Like America's yeah, very great yeah. when it comes to marketing and yeah. like selling stuff. We're like, number one, when, when it comes to giving you that idea that you have to have something in your life and that was like the whole propaganda in the 40s 50s even though the people knew there was racism going on and mm-hmm. so much stuff that people weren't getting equal rights but um i just i don't know it's, it's just that uh i just lost my track real quick <laughs> <laughs> i think it's complicated i think yeah, it's complicated compl- uh, obviously yeah it was obviously. obviously it was you know a complicated start i think uh. there's a lot of good discussions right now not just the start i mean okay uh, first of all slaughtering in indigenous people then after that slavery well you see in america um what, what my whole point was you see in america people are waking up to the point that you don't hear about columbus day like columbus day was two days ago two days ago yeah, yeah so like columbus day everybody's like really against it like how do you discover something that was already there like people are already there there's no way you can discover a country yeah. or a land a continent and you know and people are already there so people are definitely waking up and even when like thanksgiving like that has also um been an issue the last couple of years like why are we selling celebrating thanksgiving that was also you know they say they sold the story that the Europeans were accepted by the Native Americans <laughs> and we all had a big feast. No, that was like, that's what we were taught. But everybody's waking up to the point and that's good. You know, it's no, 
I think for everybody outside of America, mm -hmm. it's probably bad that the whole dream is going down and like the whole fantasy. But for the people in the States, they finally get to wake up and they don't yeah, have to say good. their pledge allegiance. Like we used to say every morning we had to give our allegiance to the flag, you know, like, yeah, that's yeah. so great. And I remember the song to this day, like I could. I pledge I allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. So crazy. So bizarre. <laughs> yeah. It's so bizarre, man. But we had this, we had this in, in, in my, like during Yugoslavia, we had this too yeah. with Tito. Every morning you go to school and there's like a, in, like above the board, above the green board, there's a speaker. And every morning you hear a message from Tito and then uh, there's a song and everybody had, um, Everybody has to sing, and it's like Tito, um, uh, Tito. We are like uh, going, like we are, pro yeah, praising, yeah, praising you, yeah, praising you <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> which is also, I mean, yeah, but that was a dictatorship. Yeah, uh, but still, but like, still it's brainwashing. It yeah, doesn't still brainwashing. It doesn't matter. It's definitely brainwashing. Yeah, it's brainwashing. Yeah, it's fucking right? brainwashing. brainwashing. Yeah. It's one way of doing it, and you better like. You know, and if not, it, right? uh, yeah, and if so. you're not, uh, or if you try to. Go out the way around. I mean, I found it weird. I was the first time in the U.S. when I was 14. I was visiting like some, some relatives in like Washington yeah. State, and uh -huh. we went to these rodeos, you know. Uh -huh. And you know, in the beginning of it, you know, like there was like the national anthem was played. Everybody would stand up, stand and, up, know, take uh, off their hats, yeah, yeah. Hand, yeah. Like the, the hand of the on the heart. Uh -huh. And I was like. I don't know what to do, you know? <laughs> I was like, all these people around me. I was like, okay, sure. I, I don't know this song. Like, yeah. I gotta go with the flow. <laughs> Uh, but like if you're not used to it it's very yeah. bizarre and we talk about yeah. north korea and how militant and what they do to their people and there's like little stuff like that all over the world what governments do to their people and make them conform and kind of like brainwash them you know like yeah, it's all a form of brainwash no matter if it's a good one or slow or direct <laughs> it's just you know that's why i think it's really good uh, you know, actually, to switch the subject, um, you were talking about the neuroscience before. Yeah. And um, what do you think about um, technology and being used to enhance our brains? Whether that be for like a uh, neural link right now with Elon Musk, you know, it's basically an interface what is connected to your brain in order for, for people with Alzheimer's or um, any other speech problems or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. But um, there's also the aspect of using that for something else besides medical, whether it be to make super soldiers or, you know, yeah. what do you think? It's very, very interesting, very controversial, of course, topics and area. I think, I think it's That's great. what we're all about. I, <laughs> That's what we're all about. I think it's great to have these like brain machine interfaces where, you know, you can help paraplegic people uh -huh. walk move, again, walk yeah. again, mm -hmm. yeah. move their limbs, you know, communicate with the outside world. I mm -hmm. think these are great applications. You know, but like, can you? That's uh, it's very basic. I mean, I think, I mean, I've been working on this for 20, 30 years. Yeah. You, know, you try to translate the science that you do on monkeys onto humans. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, you can help people, you know, Mm -hmm. Some of them can start working, some of them can com communicate through a you know, computer interface yeah. with the outside world, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. um, these are great things. At the same time, I think we have to be realistic and be like, you know, the brain is such a complicated organ. It's probably one of the most complex you know, entities in the universe. Isn't a computer also in itself? Yeah, well, so of course, it's of, a yeah, computer. Yeah, it is a computer. computer. Yeah. It is a computer. It's a very interesting so computer. So it's just hitting... Uh, is it uh, a Mac it's it's a computer? It's a computer with a computer. You mean that that connectivity is very hard? Or you mean the brain itself is such a complex thing that it's kind of hard to interface or put an interface and connect it with? Well, first, okay, so when you talk about neuroscience, right, you go from microscopic things, like on the genetic level... Uh -huh to macroscopic things like the voltages that you measure of the neurons, yeah. right? like how do the neurons signal. Yeah. Yeah. And so you can imagine a lot of neuroscience, what it's trying to do is it's basically looking as if you were looking at a computer processor, uh -huh. right? And you're trying to measure the voltages the patterns and, yeah. and then you try to figure out how does this processor work? Uh -huh. So you can imagine this is a, a very hard task, uh -huh. right? Like, yeah. So now what, what a lot of people trying to do is they're trying to you know, they slice up the process of the brain and try to look at the circuitry and part, try yeah. to see, you know, how is it connected what to each part other. What do you need, Exactly, actually. and like yeah. how are those neurons connected to each other, you yeah. know, like how do they maybe communicate, how, what, what can you see, what can you deduce from the structure on how these are built 
and may know, you know, can you deduce from the structure maybe the function of the body? Uh -huh. you know? So I think it's very complicated, man. Um, so you don't think that uh, Elon will succeed with his neural? Well, so Elon, so I watched the last video uh -huh. where he had those pics <laughs> on the um, on stage. Uh -huh. I thought it was quite embarrassing. Yeah. Because I was like, mm. dude, we've been measuring these neurons for 20, 30, 40 years. Like, yeah. this is nothing new. Yeah. I mean, the technology, how he, you know, how they developed this robot to place the probes into the brain, uh -huh. that's really great engineering. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's great. The neuroscience, there was no great insights. I mean, the, the community was like, well, there's nothing new. But I think he's also playing, he also has to play a part of this uh, public, uh, public figure picture. Of course, you know. a lot of PR with him. Yeah, a and lot I, of and, PR. I, and I like him. You know, I think we need more people like him, who just spearhead crazy projects crazy and, ideas. Promote it and promote it and promote it. SpaceX, uh -huh. right? Or yeah. the it's tunnel under LA. Exactly. <laughs> sorry, I'm you sorry, know? my chair is connected. I don't know what's um, happening. So I mean, like you know, spearheading the SpaceX thing is great. Uh -huh. yeah. I mean, like just you know, it took them 18 years to get this rocket going. Yeah. yeah right? no. But you need people like him who have the vision, yeah. who have the funds, who also go in. I mean, he's willing to lose everything. I mean, nobody knows if Tesla's going to work out, right? Yeah, yeah. Like SpaceX, they have no business case. Yeah, they just did a, I don't know if you guys know, but they're going to shoot a movie on 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 uh, in, 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 uh, international space station with yeah. with uh, Tom Cruise yeah yeah and yeah. SpaceX Tom Cruise is going up yeah. yeah 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 oh my because God. because <laughs> no because Russians mission impossible in space literally <laughs> no because <laughs> Russians Russians were, were about to shoot some type of a documentary or like a show uh -huh. or like one episode of some show at the international space station okay. and I guess typical Americans they, <laughs> they find wanted it, to do it first yeah they wanted <laughs> they wanted to do it first so they were like no fuck it let's make a feature film with Tom Cruise on it <laughs> And Elon Musk was like, why not? <laughs> so, yeah, it's a fun fact. I mean, I don't know if it's about, but, like, it's definitely a legit fact. Yeah, okay. yeah, I, I don't know if it's yeah. going to go down. Yeah, that's like, you know, when you think about Tom Cruise and how small he really is and he does <laughs> all these action films and, like, he's just out there. Bro, imagine, now he gets to go to space. Yeah, but, <laughs> but, but imagine really Tom Cruise just flying out, like, gone. I don't know. It might fit Scientology, so he might be saved. I don't yeah, know how that right. actually works. <laughs> but anyway, back to the point. Do you, uh, how do you feel about in general? Like, how do you feel about artificial intelligence and this, for example, this chip and everything? Do you think it's a good thing overall or a bad thing? Poof, hard, because it's question. it's yeah. I mean, because it's a it's a it's a it's a powerful thing you know it's like he said powerful. well the thing that would worry me humans. the most is uh so i got the chip right and i'm i don't even have a problem with like talking or walking maybe i just want to use it for some kind of enhancement and see different maybe i'm like a hunter and i like or i'm working as a i'm a soldier who does recon missions and i'm always at nighttime and i want to have like glow in the yeah. dark whatever it is but then like you have like the dangers of uh somebody hacking it and that would always come in my mind. Like, I'm sure that's always something at some part in our generation, no matter when technology started, that something new is like, oh, they're going to hack it, they're going to hack it. But that's like something that's connected to my brain and then they can like control you or give you impulses or I just, I couldn't imagine that. You know. Well, so, that's one application, right? Yeah. Yeah. The other one is like, well, you have to see you will you might also increase you know the inequality between people be like you know yes there's yes. one thing of like you know i'm helping you to have a better quality of life because you're clearly you know a yeah, disadvantage, a disadvantage that's true. and mm -hmm. the other one is like you know i'm a rich bastard yeah, yeah. and yeah. i'm just gonna <laughs> upgrade myself and my and, kids and, so they and can my be my kids yeah. so they have even more advantage yes. but what, what if this, this, what, if this before, uh, yeah. what what if this technology uh, is only handled by the government that's a fucked up thing because then they that's fucked up. Yeah. Well, when it gets know, to, I and I have a feeling that it might go in that direction, not in well, direction. I think I think if they're letting private companies be public on s stuff that they're doing right now, that the government is not per se so interested in it because they already have something better or similar. Probably, yeah. you know, because I think it's just to the point that there's no way that they would let that much information get out without them having it first because they already have the resources, the people and no, secret projects. Point. And I think if it's already letting us talk about this, who knows what they already had for 
20 years and yeah. i mean i'm not i'm not too worried about governments because at the end i mean you know the state of this technology is very very basic i yes. mean you know uh. Let's not confuse this with sci-fi movies, yeah. you know, where mm -hmm. you know people maybe yeah. have chips on the back of their head. <laughs> <or> where, <laughs> you know, there's like great sci-fi yeah. you know, movies and, and books where you know it I recently read one point. where basically you know all your memories, your whole consciousness is continuously being saved to a chip. Yeah, in the yeah, back that's of your like neck. that's a Netflix. Uh, what is it called? Uh, alt, alt, altered Carbon. You oh know, yeah, yeah, that's that's yeah. what it's about. Shout basically. out to Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a sponsored video, but it can be if you want yeah. Netflix. <laughs> Altered carbon, and that's basically the idea. You're putting your whole consciousness and everything into a chip. Exactly. And what you're doing is buying a sleeve, which is your skin, and the richer. Well, your body is called the yeah, sleeve, yeah, right? Yeah, it's a sleeve. So, which is kind of like weird because we have like games where they also say it like that. So we're already being programmed. But yeah, and the richer, the rich people, of course, can buy better sleeves with upgrades and everything and then the poor people they couldn't even buy uh new sleeves or their stacks maybe that they they were still alive you know in the chip but they couldn't be put into a sleeve because their families didn't even have uh exactly. money for the body basically uh, yeah. hopefully hundreds of years andy from now. <laughs> how f like from your professional opinion how far do you think we are from this neuro chips It's very hard to say, but I would say hundreds of years. I mean, I don't see. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you shouldn't like, underestimate. Fuck. You know, we are making incremental yeah. progress. Well, with the progress that we're making right now, we should definitely see it by the end of our lifetime, or something so, so uh, you know, drastic a change, kind of like from the 40s to the 50s to the 60s. How we've been going each and every year. There has to be something that's going to happen in 30, 40 years that we never even dreamed of. You know, I, would I mean, we're in general, hope, but I don't. I'm I'm not that optimistic. I mean, we're definitely moving really, really fast. And if you look at the last hundred years, yeah. we're moving extremely fast. Or even the last fast. like 15 years when it came, or 10 years when it came to phones, or you know. Yeah, just technology. look at last hundred years, and then look at last 10 years. Mm -hmm. Like, look at let's let's say start from the 20s, yeah, 1920s to I don't know 70s or 80s. Yeah. Look at that progress, and then look at the progress from 2000 to to 2020. Mm -hmm. Like it's yeah, but, but, but I mean, technology-wise, I feel like the progress we made in the last 20 years is like nothing. There was nothing major. There was no quantum leap, right? It was like kind of like a logical progression of technology, but there's well, nothing mind-blowing. We used to see in the 80s That's and 90s true. like movies where like the soldiers would be looking on some screen, kind of like a radar-held system. We were thinking, oh, that'd be so dope when it comes out. And then like and all of a sudden in 2000, when I was in the army and they had the GPS thing and they gave it to us and, and I'm looking at the machine, I'm like, what is this? He's like, yeah, you gotta put the coordinates in and we just put this and we go there. I'm like, whoa. So I'm just like walking. This is like exactly year 2000 when I was in the army. And then I look at like 15 years later, every phone, wristwatch, but that's uh, the, glasses that's, have that's GPS. Back to, that's back to your point, what you said. And actually Hayes told me as well, the governments and the army, they yeah, have they this technology it, yeah, way, before, yeah, had it way before, you know, for example, uh, take example, 9-11, you know, all those recordings of uh, passengers in the plane calling their parents and, and families and saying, yo, I'm in the plane, I'm about to die, blah, 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 blah. All of those recordings, technology then was already existing where I can, you, they can take your, just your ah, Ooh, or whatever just one tone of your voice and, and completely match it, up, match it up and convert like they can make an audio message like it sounds like it's you and they had this technology back in yeah. the 90s oh. you know not to mention all the cia cold war Look at the shit. face app huh <laughs> the face app yeah yeah you know what i mean and now and now we're having this technology today but like they had it i think that's why i think back to your point what you said before like i think governments like you said uh, uh have all this all technology way before it hits the like the public yeah. market and you know and and day-to-day -day usage on our smartphones and everything because of course else. they would buy it up the companies that are you know starting and, yeah, yeah and and who knows maybe those companies are maybe even some of them are controlled by government i mean we, we can never know that mm. you know but um i don't know for me this is also scary this is also very not scary but it's very you know when i think about i mean it. they can hack e e out of e cars so would you guys get an e car yes climate change is real and i would definitely huh. I would buy me a Tesla. I would hit up my boy Elon Musk. <laughs> so would you ever fall asleep? Like you see those videos no, on the internet where people stupid. are falling asleep in a Tesla and it's just driving them to I the I mean, the point. moment 
that the car really drives autonomously a hundred percent i'm gonna get that because uh -huh. i think that's a great but they have that with the tesla quality. no they don't no no no. It's not, don't. no it doesn't drive it doesn't drive like you still have to you know touch the steering wheel so and so often no, no it does drive it you does don't have drive. to touch it but it's not fully 100 percent. It, yeah. i mean yeah. you know it works probably perfectly you know in california growing from la yeah yeah because it's so long road, yeah, yeah. Road, you know <laughs> it's sunny yeah. but you know in bornheim here no you, you, exactly like you see right like the first day of snow here like there's a one centimeter of snow everybody yeah. drives like they've never driven a car before exactly yeah but the car knows how it drives yeah but then still like <laughs> just like detecting you know then 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 the lanes disappear right like it's yeah. i think really the technology it i think really it's yeah the real life problems are far le uh, more complex than uh -huh. a, a machine or a computer can yeah. predict but my question now for you is for example uh, did you watch that ne netflix documentary social dilemma no i haven't well, it's it's scary you know, I mean, it's nothing that we didn't know before, yeah. but it's it's scary. Mm. Uh, and anyway, so but you're aware of the technologies and algorithms today, how far they went and how fast they're working. So my question is to you as a professional, uh, uh, how, for example, if people like companies like Facebook and Google and all of those companies manage to build up such strong algorithms and such complex programs, basically to that that run on themselves like right now you cannot even stop an algorithm like a, a facebook algorithm is unstoppable right now mm -hmm. they can control the directions what they want but it's algorithm is just going by itself so if they can do that on such big scale and so fast and now it's now it's this superpower you mean to manipulate us through messages and what we're everything i mean everything what's happening it, yeah. yeah and like if they are managed they're, they're able to produce that type of an algorithm and if that's being able to run by itself how does it then translate for example when you said that it's for example when you mentioned brain and how hard it is because it's like so many things is there there's not a way to also work it like is, is there a connection between like algorithms that they make at facebook and what you're doing with the brain like neuroscience or is there any connection with that? So, I mean, right now, the last 10 years, right, there was like this area of these so-called deep uh, learning networks. Yeah. So these are based on like ideas that we have from neuroscience. Mm -hmm. And these are the kind of networks that right now do all your image classification, Google Photos, Facebook, right? They yeah. detect your faces. They kind yeah. of classify your music. Mm -hmm. They are used for the self-driving cars. Um, the funny thing about these deep learning networks, why they're successful is, is because A, we have unlimited computing power, basically. You yeah. know, the big companies mm -hmm. they can just build another data center. Yeah. They have unlimited data. Mm -hmm. So they know they can just throw, throw all the data on these computers. They will, they will crunch some numbers out and they will you know, be able to you know, distinguish picture, you and, and you, you know, that, yeah. that's easy. But the funny thing about these deep neural networks is that we don't know analytically, we don't understand how they work. Yeah. And that's gonna be, and so we don't know it until today. We just don't know why. It's basically a black box, it's magic. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. You know, the scientists play around, they have different layers, they, and they, it they works, turn around yeah. the number of neurons, but it's basically a brute force approach of solving a problem. So these networks are currently extremely tuned to the specific problem at hand, mm -hmm. which for me is just like not the definition of artificial intelligence. There's nothing intelligent about it, mm -hmm. right? These networks, they don't make any choices. They're not able to interpret something. Right? If I see for the first time, I don't know, you know, I try to classify cups and the first time you show me, you know, a coffee mug, you know, that looks very different, uh -huh. right? Yeah. Me as a human, I'll be immediately able to tell you this is this is a coffee mug. Yeah. The computer, if he didn't have the training data that somehow is represented this shape of yeah. coffee mug, he's gonna be like, I don't know what it is. Yeah. yeah. And so this is for me. This is where intelligence. This is the true kind of intelligence. Yes. Right? Yes, yes. Yeah. And so yeah. I feel like this is we are very far away from that. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Because we just don't understand it. We just really don't mm. understand how those things work. Mm. So the computer in itself is in a lot of situations. An infant in learning but we as people are the same way because if you showed a person i never showed uh saw a coffee cup and they're in the middle of the jungle or you know never had that stuff then they would also be like oh, i don't even know what that is what do you use it for exactly is right it a hammer but, but if i showed you it for the first time <laughs> yeah. and then you see the second time you already be like okay yes. this is also a yes cup. yes it's also yes. a device to put liquid in okay but right? you'll be able to abstract these concepts and yeah. put it together for the computer if show if you show him 
him a cup once and you show yeah. it a second time, he'll be like, I don't know what this is. Yeah, yeah, that's I true. don't know what yeah. it's used for, right? Yeah. This is way too abstract. That's and like it's also probably not able to solve uh, some intellectual problems as well. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, we had made, right, like this great progress on these like uh, chess computers, right, where they, the computer Big Blue beat like Gary Kasparov, yeah. things like that. And then they said, well, you know, the next thing's going to be to beat Go, you know, the, the, beat the, the Go players, you mm -hmm. know, this, this Asian kind of mm -hmm. version of, of Czech. Yeah. And so I think two or three years ago, I think they they had an, a computer network that would beat the best Go players in the world. But it's again, it's a very confined problem, right? I mean, there's sure there's in Go. Oh yeah, okay, I saw that. I saw there's that. There's apparently yeah. you know an unlimited amount of moves because there's so many pieces. Yeah. But still, it's a problem that you know is constrained by yeah. the size of the board, yeah. by the kind of moves you can make. Yeah. You know, yeah, of course, if the computer can simulate in one year millions of moves and games against himself, yeah. of course, you're gonna pick it up. Yeah. I think that's a trivial problem. But there's only so much that it can do. Yeah. But the computer did win in that. Uh, yeah, it did, yeah. did win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. of course, because it's a perfectly tuned <laughs> yeah. computer, yeah. perfectly tuned. I network. saw that too. I was. But so the thing is, the problem. thing is, it if it was never tuned, yes, it would never win, and if but it, it, it would it never work. Continuously. It learns continuously, right? It, even when it's not playing, it's still like playing. Yeah, you it's know? playing against each other, basically, yeah, right? The whole trying entire to figure time. It out. The, yeah, basically yeah. running algorithms, basically. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. To see the best way. That is what, crazy. Actually, a good way to connect that is um, so we were talking about interfaces in the brain and, and I guess, you know, opening up old or damaged pathways, basically, in the brain so that you can learn to walk again, speak, etc. What are. What do you find, knowing what you know and what you've learned over the years um, through academia and through personal experience, how can a person open up new pathways through natural ways? Um, so the two things that come into my mind is for once uh, meditation, uh -huh. which I think is a very powerful tool to like find out a lot about yourself yeah. and for sure create new connections in your brain yeah and the other part of that is psychedelics i think these are very tightly connected so for my personal experience i started meditating six seven years ago and i'm like meditating every day since five years okay wow well, you gotta like, teach me like a certain time limit or whatever you it's allowed for your i do so basically i just put aside every day 20 minutes in the morning okay i just do this like part of my routine yeah Sometimes I do more, but this is like the minimum that I do. Okay. Mm -hmm. And three, four years ago, I started going on this meditation retreats to monasteries. So like the first time I went on like a 10 day silent retreat into like a Buddhist temple. Oh, okay. You know, I, heard like those are, I heard those are really tough. My friend went there for a couple of months. Those are tough, man. Those yeah. are tough. Like, wh what is tough? What is tough about it? Silent, or? no well, tough, nothing. Okay. So I, I, mean, I mean, I was playing with that idea for a long time. And then, you know, one of those, you know, all of us, beginning of January, we have like, you know, new ideas, right? And I'm, yeah. like, I'm going to sign up for this. So yeah. like, I don't know, it's January 3rd for Easter. It was like an Easter retreat. Okay. And then I think two two weeks before the thing, I was like, Andreas, what did you do? <laughs> you signed up for jail. Like, I mean, you cannot talk. You yeah. have to sit there every day for 14 hours. Oh, my. Meditate. Like, yeah. what? What were you thinking? I right? In a certain I, position as well. Well, Could you can you sit. You can sit on a cushion. You can sit like lotus. Okay. You, yeah, you go however you feel matter. comfortable. But the thing is, you know, the silent retreat. It start. You start every day four thirty in the morning. Uh, so by the time it's breakfast at eight, you've been already three and a half hours meditating. You know, at that time I was meditating twenty minutes a day. Yeah. Look, yeah, I'm somebody, crazy. you know, you probably see it on the video. I'm yeah. moving constantly. I'm not the kind of guy who sits still, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you know, so sitting still yeah. in the same position for 45 uh. minutes, an hour straight. I mean, you're entering a world of pain, man. You're yeah. entering a world of, of like physical pain. Your body is just not used to but that. Probably, yeah. probably also mentally you're going crazy or... Yeah, it's just very, very challenging. So I, surprisingly, the not being able to talk part was very easy. Okay. I really enjoyed that. I think I, I, think I would die. <laughs> <laughs> For I you, I think <laughs> it would be tough. <laughs> um, you, know, you know, you put away your phone. You, you're not allowed to read or write. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. No communication. You're not supposed to look the other people into the eye. You know, basically. So when you get your food... Yeah. When you get your food, you basically, you know, you go there from the buffet, take your food, you go to the table uh -huh. by yourself. 
I mean, it's all about silencing your brain. It's yeah. all about silencing your Just your energy, basically. Yeah, you know, silencing like yourself from all the external stimuli of the uh, world yeah, so yeah. you can focus, you know, you really realize how your brain is getting calmer and calmer yeah. and calmer. Did, did something, this 10-day silent treatment there, did it woke something in you? Dude, there was like so many things. So many things? So many things. I had like a major... Breakthrough. Or? Breakthrough like on day six or seven. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And um, was it like to the point where you were so deep into the meditation that you were, I would say, hallucinating or? So I had this one experience. It was really crazy. Um, I was meditating and, you know, day six, seven, it was like an evening session, I think. Um, and I realized suddenly, you know, so but by that time, you know, you're already very aware, right? Like. Yeah you get a very good feeling for your body. You, you listen. You know what's happening. You know basically. what's happening. Yeah. And I realized my heart was starting to pound and going more and more crazy. It was oh like shit. Just out of nowhere. Through the roof, you okay. know, I was like 100. Was it like a panic minutes. attack or? Well, I was like, I mean, this is gonna, this looks like a heart attack for me. Yeah. You no, know? like, it was like going through the roof. I'm still sitting, right? I'm sitting, I'm not doing yeah, it. Yeah, I'm just it sitting be. there, my heart is going through the roof. And I was like, okay, observe, right? You cannot do anything, you just observe. At this, then after a while, the heart you know, goes slower, 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 and my heart stopped beating. And you know, I was counting like what one second, fuck? two seconds, three, it didn't beat, you know? Like after five seconds, a heart beeped. What and the fuck? After five seconds, like, you know, yeah. heartbeat. Yeah. And, you know, heartbeat. And I was like, this session was over 45 minutes. Uh. And I was like, okay, I know this is a silent retreat, but I was like, teacher, we need to talk. <laughs> Cause I don't know what just happened, but like it scared the shit out of me. Yeah, you know? I would pen, yo. And so, you know, I talked to him about it. And he's like, great, you're making great progress. Uh. You like reached us in the state and blah, blah. I was like, could you talk because you haven't talked in like six days like was it like uh, <laughs> yeah okay yeah, yeah. No, i probably bad. probably first time he opened his mouth was like <laughs> <laughs> i was just like we need to talk yeah. i was like no nah. Heart, heartbeat no <laughs> <laughs> crazy i was like you should have given me a warning yeah. for that you know but like, that's like but what was that what, what did he say so now like i'm interested to hear was it that you were so deep into the trance yeah, yeah? and that you had slowed everything down kind of like what they say the buddhist monks do and that they slow it down to the point where they don't even have to eat for a long time and yeah. you know so your whole body and the organism and how it's feeding off of each other the energy so i mean the big the big yogis the big you know people that are into meditation that like meditate their whole life yeah what they can do by awareness, the way many of them die is they let their heart stop slowly. They yeah. let it? They let it. They let it. Uh -huh. Basically, this is the way of phasing out, out of life. It's crazy. Huh. And they, it's they, also they, painful they say, then. They say their goodbyes, you know, and then they just go on this Wait. meditation journey. And they just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. And then they just like... That's why they have pictures of those, like people that are stuck in a lotus position and you they look like they're just like still alive but they're not even alive then i guess yeah, 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 they yeah. say that they're sleeping for like a hundred years or but wait well my question is but up. then then the meditation and that type of uh even silent treatment in itself if you're able if they're able to even you know basically knock themselves out you know kill themselves so that's dangerous can you also uh come to that point by accident I don't think so. I think you really need some training in order to control that. Yeah, because yeah, that's really deep. You have it's to stay really in that. really deep. Yeah. And, you know, you really need to be, like, closed off from any external stimuli. Oh. You really need to be very aware of yourself. And you need, you know, it's a very new kind of conscious experience that you have with your own body. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is scary. It's Did you scary. see things at that same exact moment or was it like pure bliss it was like bliss it was like my heart i was my body was i was sweating like crazy so okay. you know i'm sitting I in this bet, cold yeah. yeah in this cold hall uh -huh. meditating covered in like you know blankets yeah. and i'm just like radiating yeah i would heat. i would freak out because i had some sometimes i would have moments i used to have them like if i would uh like psychedelics or like even smoke some weed even i was, sometimes i would have this um, moments where my heart would either start pump super fast or yeah. super slow couldn't breathe cold sweats that's panic and that, <laughs> no, no 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 like and it, it would start with the heart like yeah. heart beeping of fast no panic attack uh -huh. and then this focusing on that 
creates anxiety, which creates yeah, then yeah. heart. You cannot breathe, and then it goes. You go fucking crazy into a panic attack. It was not like a panic attack that I'm like freaking out and screaming, but like exactly what you described. I was like, oh, what the fuck is happening? And like this already freaked the fuck out of me, and I already had traumatic experiences with it. And now imagining something like this. I would I would definitely freak out. Like it would be crazy for me. Did you have the same thing happen with psychedelics then? Like did you have any time after cuz you were obviously or were you meditating before psychedelics? Or was I was that, meditating before. I mean, as yeah. I studied, you know, the brain and all these receptors on yeah. mm-hmm, mm-hmm. all these kind of like how, you know, do these chemicals bind in the brain. I found it always intriguing, but I was always afraid of going Afraid down of taking route. the next step. I was I always like, I think we like, talked about this, is, this years ago. This like, is not my thing. I think know? we talked about this one time ago, a long time ago about like, um, taking psychedelics and I was t- talking about like how I got into it when I was younger and it was like the best thing in my life it, every single time even if it was a good or bad experience it always changed something in like me. a woke experience yeah Yeah, no it's just like different point of view yeah different point of views and I never lost it like it, it could I guess it compared to if a thousand pathways were open on that night or that or on that day whenever I did it that I would still have the the incense of it of like what I felt in that moment. Like I might have not have all a thousand roads still open, but like the main thing always stayed behind me. And like it felt like, which is also a good question for you. Do you feel like the pathways that you open stay open? I think if you make a conscious effort and really do it about, I'm trying to expand the perception of myself and uh-huh. the world. I think you can take a lot out of this. Uh-huh. No, and you can. How really do you prepare yourself for that? Well, so there's a lot of good literature, literature, you know, like from back in the seventies. I mean, there's like the psychedelic explorer yeah. or like Terence McKenna, Terry McKenna, <laughs> <and> O'Leary, <laughs> yeah. all these people. They have good books. Like there's this one book called The Psychedelic Experience, which is based on the Tibetan Book of Death, which is very funny. Which is yeah. Tibetan monks read this book preparing for the transition into the afterlife. Okay. And it's a whole book about like, how do you go into this journey? Yeah. And um, Tim of Lear, he, he basically took this book and he says, well, this is also a way that you can go into the psychedelic experience. Uh-huh. It's, a, it's a guiding book. So basically it's like, you know, think about it. Where do you want to go? How do you prepare? Like, you know, mm-hmm. this is not just, this is not fun, really. Like, I really need to say that this is not like you do this for fun because you know people get wasted. This, yeah. is, a real, this is a serious. This thing is a journey. I can. This is I, a journey, I can, I can right? understand the comparison, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. And then be like, you know, and you reach parts of your brain of your consciousness that you never thought you know existed, right? You're opening a door. Just mm-hmm. basically like a key to your to yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But you don't know what's going to happen. You don't have a guarantee that's going to be a time of your life. This yeah. can be the you know most miserable time of your life. I mean, you can have a psychosis. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, have to be a, very yeah. aware. Yes, yes, yes. This can have tremendous effects. And you need to be, and I think that's in why. In a good place. You know, in a good place. And yeah, I think you yeah. need to be aware of the risk. And so I think for me, it was only until recently, you know, three or four years ago, where I was like, am I willing to take this that risk uh-huh. that I will never be the same person again? Uh-huh that I might get stuck in a different programming of my brain yes, and I will yes. never be able to get out of this. Yeah. That is my that is my ultimate fear of psychedelics is I definitely know I'm not in a good place right now because uh. there's so many millions of questions uh. to be answered. Some of them, some of the, the, the questions I'm still yet to find to even ask those questions. And we talked about it because we were about to actually, we, I think not that we were close to taking psychedelics, but we uh. were like, we were talking about it and um and i was and i actually wanted to do it because it you know um it sounds so much so interesting for me you know yeah. like this whole thing is like wow bro, i, I just to. think when people talk about it it makes like people even if they're a little bit afraid just like still, still you know and also like, like you know? ayahuasca thing like all this uh, shit i remember the first time finding about ayahuasca i was like whoa this is something i have to yeah but i think you should ch- i think starting my opinion mm-hmm. Well, hmm. the thing is, what I wanted to say is like, what scares me is this, this risk. Uh-huh. And what scares me that I know that I'm not still in a good place. Um, definitely not prepared for it. And what I would tell you, like, uh, what would you adv- be advice for me? Um, in, in, into preparation for something. Not like, yo, bro, practice this, this, this for a month and then you could take some shrooms <laughs> or acid. But like more as in like, you know, 
is there any type of preparation for uh, psychedelics? Maybe like meditation or something? Right, exactly. So I would tell... And not say, like for a month, maybe for like a couple of years, you know. Start meditating. Stop oh. meditating. Start with 10 minutes a day. Try to extend it to 20. This will put you on a journey. Just invest. See it as an investment into your own health. Yeah. yeah. Man, like we waste so much time every day use, doing useless stuff. Yeah. Exactly. 20 minutes. Everybody has 20 Everybody minutes. Has. Yeah. You, you know, know what's my problem? I do meditate when I notice them at my lowest points. And then when I start feeling good, I stop meditating. And, and but then and then you get out of it and then stick with it, man. Yeah. Just this is like a pledge to yourself, yeah. to that, your own body, you know? That's like comparing to um I only think positive stuff when I'm in a good mood and everything is going good. But as mm. soon as, you know, things are going bad, you want to start thinking uh uh negative and not understanding why everything is not going positive. Yeah. You know? yeah. So yeah, you gotta yeah. keep that train of uh, train of thought and be like I'm going to be positive things will work out it's shitty right now it's shitty. but you know like I think when you're going on that what he's saying with the meditation is when you're you're comfortable with being in your brain and in your thoughts is compared to actually being on a psychedelic uh, journey, you know, like yeah, you're, you're going to go so. places in your brain and no matter deep what, thoughts what? and you're going to have to be able to confront those thoughts and that emptiness and yes. the ego death and like realizing that there's more to you than just your body and like what you're maybe even stuff that you're putting out to people is not what you want to be putting out and you finally see the real and that's really going to mess with your mind <laughs> yeah i mean you know? it messes with my mind if i'm if i'm alone at home yeah yeah that's what i mean and i'm alone at home nobody's at the house and i'm just you know kind of peaceful not even meditating just peaceful or like you know those 30 minutes before you hit the bed right uh -huh. i'm already freaking out i didn't smoke no joint i didn't do nothing <laughs> I, i'm totally chilling you know yeah. all i had was a glass of water yeah. and i'm i can sometimes freak out already by myself sure. so if i can if i'm able to freak out by myself without any influences <laughs> i don't even want to think about no, what don't. Can I do no. on this the is the mature thing to do yeah. leave that away man because <laughs> whatever state you're in it's yeah. most probably going to enhance it's going to enhance exactly. and it's going to go exactly. through the roof same with the, and, I mean, with the what smallest we're talking thing. about is i think this is like most people struggle with this accepting yeah themselves as they are right now right exactly many of us they feel uncomfortable right mm -hmm. in our own skin in certain yeah. situations yeah. and a lot what a lot what do a lot of people do they like start drinking yeah. smoking Hiding. you know get, yeah. get you know get high i don't yeah. know get the phone out you always divert your attention yeah. like, i don't have to think about it no man yeah accept it that back. accept yeah. that and feel that it. pain and feel learn that it, anxiety yeah. and once you start observing that that's what meditation is about you'll be like oh it's okay like it's okay mm -hmm. that i feel like that yeah and then you realize the more I look into this, the more I'm accepting, you know, you start talking to yourself. You're like, yeah. no, it's okay. Like, you know, okay, I'm feeling like this right now. You, you realize this goes away. Yeah. You know, this goes away. And so you, I think it's about developing a relationship to yourself. And like with psychedelics, you can just take this to another level. Yes. But yeah. you have to really understand, you know, you're basically... You're strapped onto a rocket. Yeah, <laughs> you don't know yeah. which. You don't, you don't know, know where it's going. <laughs> yeah. like you don't know if, if yeah. you have the illusion that you can control this yeah. rocket. Sometimes you can. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> but you can control yourself. So no matter where that rocket takes you, yes. you're exactly, ready. Exactly right. Yes, and you're but ready I, and for I think ride. for that yeah. you should really have a good understanding of yourself, which you know most of us never have. Yeah. And it's a it's a continuous process. Yeah. But you need to be like, what am I at my darkest? What am mm. I at my lowest? Like, you know, what are the things that trigger me? Like, yeah. do I know how to take care of myself yeah. or do I always need somebody else? To do, do you that? think, do you think uh, that, uh, it w like, I suppose psychedelic experience was mostly good for you, right? Yeah. So do you think it would be any different if you were meditating a couple of years prior to that? I think I would have not been able to handle that. Yeah? Yeah, I think so. I mean, so I, I had one, I would say, bad trip which in retrospect i think was a very good experience that i had uh -huh. i learned my lesson from it which was i was not in a good mindset i yeah. had a very chaotic 10 days i was just like in overdrive uh -huh. i knew i was like you know not doing too much it. you know i'm an yeah. introverted person so i mean like if i meet with people i need two or three days of downtime i had yeah. like within 10 days i met on seven or eight nights with people yeah which is sometimes fun. I sometimes love losing myself, yeah. it, but I need to come back <laughs> and, and to really again. find myself yeah. and center myself. Yeah. And then there was a party and then people were like, well, why don't we take shrooms? And the reason why I, and I was like, this is not the way that I, 
that I've ever taken, you know, any of these psychedelics for me it was always. You mean like in a party much. scene? Well, like first of all, I would never take it as a party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This uh, is second uh, of all, I always go for a preparation where you know I like make sure the day or two before it's like, clean I, and I, it's I shut nice. Down, like Your I have very, you know, you pick out. Yeah. exactly. Like uh. I don't have any much, you know, I don't have too much things going on. It's like you mentioned, like the whole day is like you get ready for it. It's yeah, a you spiritual can, process. Really it's I, not I a party. Two days yeah. Prior to that, ready. My whole day before is just going to for the next day. Yeah, then you have the whole day itself yeah. and then if you do it right i feel like there's a lot of things to unpack the next two or three four days oh, yes, you yes. know where you talk about it and yeah. like you just we realize evaluate. all the things that happen but in this situation it was like you know three good friends at an apartment i was yeah. like okay you've never done this you've never exposed like it's an experience yeah. you i knew in this moment this could go sideways yeah. i knew it <laughs> you know mm. um surprised it went sideways yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know it was it was challenging but it was a good experience because i was like okay you know whatever my ego and super ego was at the time i was on this loop where you know all the anxiety all the things that are like you know that you know all the kind of trauma that you know mm. justifying me who i am yeah. just came up and i was like okay I'm dealing with this. I know how to deal with it. You know, like, okay, loop one, loop two, after 10, 15 iterations, you're like, yeah. okay, this is getting tiring, <laughs> but I mean, it's not like you can turn it off, turn it right? Off. I was yeah, like, yeah. okay. <laughs> so like, you know, six, seven, eight hours into that, <laughs> I was like, all right, like, you knew, I, I learned my lesson yeah. here. I really learned I my lesson. Yeah, I will never do this again. <laughs> how, how often do you, do you take uh, psychedelics? I would say two or three times a year very controlled yeah. and like i suppose like if it's two if it's three times a year then it's like probably every three months every quarter or something every quarter, right? yeah. yeah but it has to be the right yeah Mood, I really everything have to, has to fit together everything has yeah. to fit together it has to be the right people it yeah. has to be the right setting we have to feel good like mm. you know you plan it but then you might cancel it last minute yeah. like look this is like not the right time you yeah know, it's like too much going i on. had literally i i was actually about to take psychedelics and uh and literally two days before that i i called the guys and i told them hey i'm not sure if that's the, now it's the time for, to, for me to take that well i had a friend. and i'm actually glad because like you know like i told you i'm not definitely ready like I'm not ready f uh, uh, being sober <laughs> in this world. I'm not uh, still able to handle it mentally, this world and the situations that I'm having right now. And like, you know me privately really good. I'm, I'm going through a quite hard time now mentally, you know, some connections with people and blah, blah, blah. And now, like, you know, taking acid or something, I think it will be like... Uh, well, I don't know. It can go either way. But if you know already that you're not ready, no, then don't you're not ready. Yeah, yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. So I a mean, lot of people could look at that as like, you know, that is then the time that I need to find myself and step back and maybe I can, yeah. you know, use, delve into that world and use that. That you know, is the only it. thing that is actually, that is actually the only thing that's intriguing me. That is actually the part that makes me like, hmm, maybe I could step into this world. Mm -hmm and play with it and maybe i find something there which will then open me a new like a pathway or mm -hmm. or just a vision for like you used once analogy like it's like taking psychedelics is like you're going this street and then what psychedelics does is like gives you another point of parallel yeah it gives street. you way more streets to yeah walk down, yeah but it's the so. same street but like a parallel yeah. different time and and i like this analogy and i was hoping maybe okay psychedelics can maybe let me see that maybe I, then when i come back to the real world I can. <laughs> I have a good story for that because yeah. I had a friend. He was thinking the same thing and always hearing me talk about stories and, you know, like Candy Flip. And I did LSD then, and I looked. I felt like I was in a cartoon, and I realized how superficial the world was. And he's like, he was like you. He was very. He's a hypochondriac, and every little thing that I he, know. You told me this yeah, story. But every time <laughs> he gets like, you know, sick or hurt, like it's always a big thing. You yeah. Know? So you and the way he was controlled as a kid from his parents then um, this is also like his mindset to, mm -hmm. you know, you can't do drugs, you can't do this. This is definitely not accepted in our world, no matter where we work right now and how many like drugs we actually make. But he just couldn't take it himself and because it's illegal. And then one day he's like, you know what? Uh, I'm just going to do it. I'm like, you sure? <laughs> he's yeah. like, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do truffles. So I'm like, okay. So I got him like, you know, uh, from out of five, it was a three star one. So it was like right in the middle and stuff. So we're taking it, 
when everything is cool, I'm having the best trip of my life, like one of like the top fives in my life. Uh, and like I'm seeing everything's breathing, the streets is like really breathing at me. Like every time I take a breath, the leaves and everything is taking a <laughs> breath and I feel beautiful. so connected. And it wasn't even like so sunny at that point, but I still feel like I'm breathing, it's breathing. And I, I realized, wow, the ground, I am it, I am one. It was like, <laughs> I was having a beautiful experience. And then I look over to, to, I look over to him and he's like, I can see he's going like somewhere. Like he's not looking, you know, he's, see, he's seeing the real world, but it's not, it's like something I don't see. And I can just see his eyes going back and forth, back and forth. Like about to yeah, go bad. Then, I'm like, you okay? yeah this is this is crazy and he's like holding on to the park bench and i'm like you know what after like an hour later because i'm having like the best time of my life but i realize he's not comfortable you know we need to maybe have a slow change of scenery let's just like ride the bikes on the mine and just you know just talk a little and stuff mm -hmm. so we're talking everything's going good at first and then all of a sudden i look back and i'm like yo you okay he's like you know what i realize you know life Whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen. I can't control it. You're so right. You know, like I'm like, what? I'm I'm right about what? <laughs> As he's saying this, he's like riding into oncoming traffic with his bike, oh and I'm like, oh my god, what are you talking about? He's like, whatever happens, happens. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> so I went from like the best trip of my life it's to all worst. of a sudden having to like snap out of it, and I'm not snapped out of it. I'm only like an hour and a half into it, so I'm really in it, in that zone. But I'm like still there like trying to control them and i'm like arguing stop just come slow down we stopped the bike he's like no I, I just can't take it no more i just can't i have no control over my life i have nothing no there's no control i'm just gonna whatever happens happens and just rides off i'm like <gasps> what and then all of a sudden he was gone so i'm like i'm i'm he way just out the there guy. yeah i'm <laughs> like i'm tripping i'm like almost by my house i'm just sitting on the corner where could he be it's frankfurt and i'm like my my psychedelic mind right now is already thinking like i can go that way i can go that way cut it off and i'm like thousand things i'm computating in my head and i'm knowing i'm so fucked up <laughs> there's no <laughs> way to make it so in the story is he came off of it maybe like three hours later met up with him again on the mine i'm still like out there he's like slowly coming down and then like apologized that he was sorry and like two days later he realized how controlled he was in his mind through mm -hmm. his parents and his whole what he pictures as a good german and what he's supposed to be mm -hmm. and that was all bs you know and yeah, he yeah. did take it too far by saying whatever happens is gonna happen because i was like fucked up and, and drives like, up yeah he, he's like, he apologized over and over i'm so sorry i put you through that because i was like i was going crazy i couldn't one side of me is like i want to help but i need to help myself <laughs> you know mm -hmm. like I, yeah. I but i can totally function. understand where he's yeah. coming from you know i grew up in a very conservative household you know i mean grew up in germany but like in at home it was you're, Polish. you're a yeah. slav yeah, yeah. Slav, right? <laughs> we're slavs so like, like, there are there are like always this moral things like this is good this you is have bad. to be so you, you have, have to, to be, be so and so yeah. so you can imagine you know when i was in la you know 13 14 years ago and people went to burning man you know they were like andreas why don't you come to burning man Huh. I knew I wouldn't be able to deal with Burning Man. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. obviously the time to go yeah. to Burning Man. Yeah. Right? Sometimes I, when I watch videos, I'm not being able to <laughs> deal with like, it. This is not the place in my life right mm -hmm. now to be there. Like I, I will not be able to handle this. And so the funny thing, why did I start doing, uh, you know, even dabble with these psychedelics was, you know, I was again in, in a monastery meditating. Mm -hmm. I was in a Zen monastery in uh -huh. Switzerland. And they were really cool. They were like, you know, they were not so... Do they rock psychedelics? wait a minute <laughs> so, <laughs> so i was there and they were like really cool like it's like in the swiss alps and oh, they were like, I could like beautiful yeah. you know like you look over like a lake after the, the snow-covered mountains and they were like super these nice warm people and um they were like you know it's a silent retreat and everything but you can talk to us and ask and every day you have to do some work and i just was assigned to a guy and you know, we were like chopping wood and i was just interested to find out who this person is and you know, like how did you end up here in this monastery you know like what's your life story blah 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 blah. Uh -huh. but it's a silent and, treatment, no? and he was like well yeah but but we were allowed you know to talk ah, okay, so okay. they were not that strict and he was like, yeah, you know, he's originally from Berlin and he had like this fucked up childhood and he was taking too much psychedelics and this and that. Long story short, he was like, 
you know, last year we had people from the University of Zurich here who were administering acid to us and <laughs> because they wanted to study how our how? brains okay. behave, you know, us as monks uh -huh. people on meditate on acid. What? And he was like, Andreas, this was the craziest, most intense experience of my life. Uh. I reached states that I never thought and I can tell you, it scared the shit out of me. I'm not gonna do this for the next three or four years. And I was like, whoa. And they had a really <laughs> great library in this monastery. Yeah. I was like, here are some books on this. Okay. And so he pointed me onto this books. And I was like, well, if this dude is doing that, I was like, maybe I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. Oh, but that must be like, so it's an experienced person by meditation taking LSD for that 10 hour yeah. ride. And that's the funny thing, you know, <laughs> so the first time I took acid, it was like in a group, we were 10 people. Uh -huh. I just felt comfortable because I knew the people. I knew five of them had a lot of experience, so I knew I'm like in good hands. Yeah, that's also very important. Very important. Yeah, right? yeah, like, yeah. I mean, I would never do what you did with your friend to do it in the city. It was really yeah. like, you know. It was no, at, no, at, we were actually the on the mine. We were on the mine yeah. river, yeah. But mine is, at the beach, you know, city, in Croatia, yeah. like, you know, in the, in the woods. Croatia very nice. nice. And, you know, and I took it and the experience was overwhelming, you know, the, how I perceived the, the, the music they were listening to, you know, like you know, yeah. how, how, how I saw the world, the mm, light, mm. the trees, the smell, everything. And at a certain point, I was like, wait a minute, this state, this is familiar. This feels familiar. And I was like, oh, this is the kind of state that you reach when you're meditating for yeah. hours. And so for me, this was this very cool experience of being like, okay, I can reach the same kind of state of consciousness. Uh -huh from the inside, from meditating yes. by myself, mm -hmm. yeah. or kind of from the outside, mm -hmm. from top down, by taking, you know, whatever. From your own DMT. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. That's true. That is great. Guys, if I if I want to do some psychedelics, will you do it with me and babysit <laughs> yes. my ass? <laughs> yes. All the way through? Are you, yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. One of my good experiences also was actually seeing sound. A lot of it's people, amazing, a lot right? of people say that. Yeah. So that is can, the craziest. That's the like craziest I still remember thing. it to this day. Like I still remember what colors to what kind of tones yes. was actually fitting. I never saw that. Like my whole experience, yeah, 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 yeah. and that was like probably two years ago. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. What what is the name for? It's it? called synesthesia. So okay. where you, where your senses they uh, they connect. Yeah. To mm -hmm. synthesize. Yeah. And so some people they have this naturally. Yeah. They have this natural these connections in the brain when when they hear a sound they see something flicker in front yes, of their eyes. yes like colors and patterns yeah, yeah, yeah. Naturally, yeah. That you know? a lot yeah. of times so. but you can on on uh, on these psychedelics you know because there are certain pathways that are being up regulated Connected, and yeah. down regulated uh. you know you can invoke it so when you blindfold yourself and you yeah. lay on the floor and yeah. this is one so mostly people they do this outside trip you know mm -hmm. they look in outside the world uh -huh. you can do an inside trip in yeah. inside your mind yeah. yes yeah. i've done that a couple yourself, of times yeah you lie on the floor and you yeah. listen to music or it's outside yeah you hear, I don't know, a baby cry, I don't know, some uh, voice, and you see it flicker in front of your yes. eyes. You see sound. I it's could like actually the see the patterns, the exactly. geometric shit, the geometric shape. But do you like uh, see waveforms and shit? Or no, for me it was more like really geometric straight shapes that were like pulsating out like a sunburst. Yeah. And I could see certain like purples for deep bass for me for some reason was a purple. And when I really liked it, like I connected that like where I really liked the sound uh -huh. plus with the melody, then I would see it in green. Like I could actually like connect my feelings to the to the how I was seeing it. Like I was just closing my eyes. Like I was tripping my ass off. Yeah. But I was like laying down, close my eyes for like at least an hour and every sense was like that was before the breathing. I know yeah. the breathing happened and then this happened. Crazy. <laughs> so, like the crazy, everything crazy. was breathing its life and yeah. Andy, did you try ayahuasca? No, that's like on that's my to-do list. Me too. That's the only thing I have not tried. Um, yeah, I, would, I, would, I have a lot of respect yeah. for that because yeah. I think it's really... So I don't know. I think I feel like, you know, I have a plan that I'm working through. Like I'm on this trajectory. Yeah. Do you want to be able to kill yourself by tapping it out? Your <laughs> Is this your plan? That would be a nice can, thing when I'm old, old and I, I just don't want... I mean... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually. I just don't want it. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I've been on this spiritual journey the last seven eight years i can see myself potentially in 40 years i don't know living in a cave just like by myself meditating the mm. whole day you know i don't know maybe, i can see i maybe, can see maybe, that too maybe the I kids mean, come by once a year you know be like hey dad 
Hum. I mean, if that's a nice way to go, I mean, why not? Yeah. Why not, man? Like, yeah. I think that's a great idea to be like, if you can decide live, leave this world in a state where you're at ease with yourself and everybody else that's beautiful yeah it's beautiful man well, i mean death i mean yeah. death scares the shit out of me right now really? but yeah yeah but i think just because of, i'm still young and i still haven't it, but it's because of i'm not cool you know with yeah. myself yeah, and yeah, yeah. looking for stuff and I think once I hit that, I think I'm. Um, you might accept it a little. Might bit accept. More. It. I mean, uh, now with the problems, I see myself accepting it. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you ever have any like ne uh, near death experiences? Uh, I guess you can. Like, I got picked up by a car once, but nothing happened. Like, literally nothing. Like, you just, got hit by a car. Yeah, oh. but I kept on walking. Oh, okay. Um, once I almost got hit by a car, and this would be bad. But and I mean I had a couple of times gun pulled to my head, but nothing. Nothing where you. But, were like, but like a moment yeah. where you were like, "This is it." Yeah. No, You're not really like I'm passing out and I'm seeing white and 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 then I wake up and I'm like, "Wow, I was basically almost dead." No, I had mm -hmm. moments where I could die quite easily, like for example, gun to my head, but like nothing, nothing that you know. And subconsciously, for example, when I had a gun to my head, I knew subconsciously. I'm not, fine. yeah. Okay. And I was even thinking, is the bullet inside of it? It's not, <laughs> is it even like, a, like locked? And I was like, mm -hmm. so never had like a proper, I would say proper um, near death experience. Yeah. But why do you ask? Or? Well, I had that twice. Mm -hmm. And I think it really changed Changes my relationship own. with life and death. Mm -hmm. And since then, I'm just like way more chill chill living in the moment and like i'm really grateful for the life i'm having you know despite all the problems and shit you go through mm -hmm. you know yeah. i feel like since a few years i'm like always like if this were today the last day of my life i've seen it all i've seen the good i've seen the bad yeah. the funny the sad i had a great life this is like i fully experienced it you know like yeah. emotionally consciously that's that's nice and if today is the last day so be it you know yeah. yeah but that i think that also comes with the age with the experience yeah. in itself and and also with the state of mind you know mm -hmm. the, do you think that psychedelics or and meditation help you being so do you think it was only near-death experiences that you had or do you think it's, it was also like psychedelics and meditation and spiritual life that helped you be like okay if today's the day so be it I think these are all different parts of a big puzzle of like yeah. trying to find <laughs> yeah. myself, of like okay. yeah. really trying to find also my authentic self. Because yeah. I think I was the so constrained, death. you know. Yeah. <laughs> ego death is fucking scary. Yes, the first time scary. you go into ego death, you know there's something and you really have to give up, right? You really yeah. have to be like, I'm giving up mm. all resistance and I don't know what's going to happen at this end of the tunnel. Yeah. This might be it. It's scary. Yeah. But once, you know, you have a trip where you, I don't know, you have like 10, 15 ego deaths. You're yeah. like, you know what? I get spit out yeah. and I'm great. <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. And I'm good. Yeah. And like, this yeah. is good. Like, you know, stuff that's scary, it's supposed to scare you. Stuff that hurts you. You know, we all go to stuff that like really hurts us. It's supposed to. Yeah. It's supposed to hurt yeah. you. are supposed to learn from that. You're supposed to feel that. That's what is life all for me it's all about yeah. like how do these experiences make you feel yeah. and it's not about we are hippie happy go lucky everything is great man like if you want to mm -hmm. feel great you have to feel like shit at mm -hmm. times you know like really yeah. and you need to learn and and that's for sure like in my 20s i wasn't able to to deal with emotions that were heavy i was always trying to avoid it i was yeah. like yeah let's read a I'm book learn, oh, <laughs> let's i don't know do this let's do yeah. that like i didn't want to feel any of that mm. and that was like a long process man of like 15 years of being like you know learning to understand yourself and learning that you need to face and feel this other side of the coin mm -hmm. uh, you know to know yourself I feel yeah very, very important. I, I would like to that's definitely true with like the whole big puzzle because I had a, also a couple near death experiences, you know, with my blood infection. And I definitely changed after all that when I was in the hospital for so long and realizing how something that they don't even know what happened to me can change my whole outlook on life. And I cannot even be here tomorrow for my kids. And that also, I was always a live life kind of person and i did lsd when i was like 18 my first time wow. that's though, <laughs> wow yeah which is crazy because i was american i was, huh? no, I was <laughs> I'm joking, like I'm joking. very into sports and stuff but like i just was 
I was always looking for something that there was something more out there. I always had like this uh, this feeling when I was a kid that there was we were like somebody's project and somebody was looking down on me Mm -hmm. and I wanted to understand why is that feeling so heavy in me? And it wasn't like a God figure for me. It was more like we're being played with and whatever happens happens. And then like, and Uh, Elon Musk is behind all of it no I just just wanted to like you know delve into it I even though I wasn't ready like I was so against drugs for some reason that just spoke to me and like I don't know why it did but Mm -hmm. what would you step wrapping this up now Andy what would you to people that uh, obviously have no knowledge uh, about um, psychedelics and this whole spiritual life mostly targeting psychedelics and people that are scared of it or people that have some you know you know that don't feel this controversy and everything what would you what would your advice be to people who are like let's say super religious and then it's a hard no for them or people that are just scared of it or people that don't know shit about it or i don't know people who think that psychedelics are oh drugs are bad for you and this is the drug and don't like what what would be your comment and maybe advice as a you know as a professional you know like as a scientist you know what i mean as mm-hmm. a doctor of science as a, someone who lives spiritual life and with all of your years of experience what would it be um um advice because a lot of people you know when you talk to them for example if i s- mention psychedelics to my mom actually my mom is a new age kid so maybe you know but if i mention to like my auntie or like my grandma mother psychedelics she would be like i, I would turn into a zombie yeah. so like and, and not even my older people like also some younger people today you know so what they're scared of it you know so what would it because i, I mean you're obviously completely fine looking you know so like what would your comment on that be? And I'd advice? be like, you know, inform yourself, educate yourself. I think yeah. we have to really understand that this classification, what is a drug, what is a good drug, a bad drug, is kind of arbitrary, right? Like society says coffee mm. and tea, these are good drugs, mm. right? Alcohol is a socially completely accepted drug. I mean, mm. there are thousands of people dying. You know, we mm. have yeah. we have fests, sugar. we have yeah, sugar. Yeah. Sugar is right? the number one addicted. <laughs> I think like educate yourself, take a book, you know, there are great books out there on this yeah. topic. Try to have an open mind a lot of and, research, and, yeah. and do the research, you know, Re- read about it. I think if you're really open-minded and you're willing to expand your, your, your perception of these things, you can find that there's, I think there's something to it. For me, it was really this, how can it be that we have all these indigenous people, the Aztecs, the Mayas, you yeah. know, like mm. all around the world, yeah. this has been part of their culture. Yeah. And I'm like, how ignorant can we as Western people be to say like, no, 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 no. this is bad. I'm like, I yeah. think they were, some, <laughs> they were onto something, yeah. right? They're clearly yeah. like the shamanic rituals, yeah. there's something to it. Yeah. I mean, in this Western world, we're just like so far removed from nature that of course it sounds absurd, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. And like for me, I can tell you like for me, like, you know, being this, this classic scientific education, like whatever I don't see and I yeah, don't yeah, measure doesn't exist, right? Yeah. <laughs> right? This was hard for me to even read this stuff because I was like, this is bullshit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, well, but if I don't have the words to describe what's happening there, yeah. how can I come with my I know it all yeah. approach and be like this is BS like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah you who am I to say right yeah. so I'm like am I disqualifying thousands of years of like you know civilizations who have clear connections that's played a major role in that like who am I to say that right mm-hmm. so like have an open mind I can't understand you know we are all like you know s- primed by our you know s- social environment mm-hmm. by our education to you know have certain moral stances on these on these topics but like read about it. You know, whether it's a book, it's Reddit, you know, y- you find so much information. Yeah. Read the good, read the bad, read the scary, you know, yeah. read the, you know, the, the therapeutic literature. There's like so many things that you can read up on it, you know, be mm. open-minded and decide for yourself, really decide for yourself and don't feel forced to have to do it. I think that's really, you know, so many kids, right, when they're teenagers, they're like, you mm. know, I have to drink, I have to do this. Like, I luckily never had this. I was always into sports, mm. you know, I was no, never Same, drinking, yeah. never smoking. Just like did not appeal to me 
But like if this is something that interests you, you yeah. know, and find people, you know, if you talk to people about it, you'll see many people talk about yeah, it. Yeah. Many people do these things. Yeah. Find the right people that you feel comfortable with and mm -hmm. be like, you know, be my guide. Yeah. And um don't do anything stupid, you know, be 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 mature about it. I think that's important. Mm. I find that uh for me, like personally, psychedelics helped me so much in my life and the stages where I needed it. And even for like when I was in the military and I was so patriotic and it helped me to like open up and see a bigger picture than just where I was born and that I was lucky to be born there. No, you know, like I would say one quick story. Once I was driving a car in the army, just got in the army and it was a five series BMW. I'm with the girl. I'm driving like 140 down this side street. And I'm going to connect this story because I was in the army, I was fresh, patriotic, and I had already did a couple of times tripped and I was already changing. I felt it. And I'm riding like 140 down this street and all of a sudden there's a brick wall, you know, like a wall, it's a dead end street. And then, and I, to this day, don't know how I lived because I don't, it's kind of weird me tripping so much before and opening these pathways and having new thoughts and stuff, I felt like I didn't live. It was weird. I had such a, I, nothing happened to the car. In my reality, I stopped the car like right here, right on the wall. Oh, I think you told me this actually. Yeah. Right on the wall. And I still do not know this day. There's no way I should be alive. There's no way I could stop in that. It could have been that I really died and went straight into a parallel reality. And that's how I ended up in Germany, you know, stayed here. And this happened in Germany. It was just so weird. But it, and I remember in that moment, just me realizing, you know, I've done so much, even though I'm so young, but I've been so free up to this point. Whatever happens, happens in that mm. moment. I just let go and I just kept on living in a sense. It was mm. such a connection and it changed me, you know, like really changed me. Like I decided from that point on, I wasn't going to join the army again or re-sign up. I wasn't going to do this and that. I was going to think, rethink about going back to the States. Is this that important? You know, like... I'm living. It was just a weird, you know, it's helped me so much in my life mm. to, to be able to let go. Wow, guys, you make it sound tempting. <laughs> Psychedelic <laughs> sounds tempting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, Andy, thank you so much for coming. Uh, this was a really enjoyable, wonderful podcast episode. Yes. I really enjoyed the conversation. Thanks for having yeah. me. It was a pleasure. Was, I mean, every time I talk to you, I enjoyed the <laughs> conversations, but this was really informative and also uh -huh. it, it was a fun talk. I That people see that uh, you can still be successful in career life and still broaden your, you know. Yeah, it was really interesting. I would definitely, as soon as this, we hit, uh, we have people coming in. <laughs> as soon as we uh, uh, click stop recording, I'm going to ask you a couple more questions. <laughs> but anyway, thank you very much so, so much for coming. Uh, guys, thank you so, so much for listening. This is whatever podcast episode. Yes, yes. Number three. Three. Thank you very much, peace, guys. Peace, 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 peace y'all. Bye-bye.